So brother-in-law's here. He's going to show me how to change an alternator because my alternator is squealing, sounds loud, and change my belt. First, we'll take these. Make sure we get clear of that in the battery. And if we can't get the battery from up here, I don't think we should go from the bottom. I think we should come out the fender with it because of the way it sits. But if we move this and this, it'll give us a lot more space. And these are eight. Oh, these are ten. All right, so you have these two, right? It's just a cover to make it look pretty, more or less. I usually you find a spot, like magnetic. If you don't have a magnetic tray, just find here. I'll put it right here. Just find a spot where you put everything. You know? Yeah. Because once you lose something, you you just put it wherever you want to put it. And then there are two little clamps back here in the back. I got a little tray up. Okay, thanks. So, you see how this watch watch will pop this up, right? See those two scoops? I think pulls forward, oh, yeah. right? Uh -huh. It hinges on that. Yeah. So theoretically, you can go like that hmm. if you really wanted to. Does it give you just a little bit more access? Yeah. To the belt and everything. Because there's a little blocking right here. That lower radiator hose. This is called a lower radiator. This upper radiator hose. Uh huh. Kind of slightly gets in the way, so we use an extension to bring the auto tensioner to loosen it. I'll show you when we get into it. Okay, let's take this out. Um, <clears throat> it's going to erase any memory you have in the radio. No, I don't think it's a big deal. You want a gloves? No. My, oh, your hands are probably too big for the gloves. I'm going to So when you take when you take these off, okay, mm -hmm. um, always take the negative off, negative terminal off first. Mm -hmm. Negative one you'll see is usually grounded immediately, and then there's uh -huh. another ground down there on the back of the motor, or really off the probably the chassis that connects to the transmission. Because if you don't ground, the power doesn't flow, right? So there, theoretically, if you if you want to uh, get power, all you got to do is take the negative off. But in this case, we take both off because. Um, we want space. Just be really careful when you pick them up. They're heavy. Nice. Well, this thing, like some batteries don't have a handle and they're very slippery. Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, what an automatic tensioner is. So I'm going to explain those so there's no adjustments, right? It's just a spring. You push one direction, it goes back. Mm -hmm. Tension. That's so all it just, is. So it automatically keeps it at the proper yeah. tension? Yeah. And so if it wears out, you just replace it. There's no adjusting it. But the one on this, okay, is hidden by this upper hose. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as, uh, honestly, as take as dra you know to drain the coolant low enough to be low under this hose uh -huh. to take it off. Otherwise, coolant will go everywhere. Uh, you know, uh. to move it out of the way. I wouldn't really worry about doing that, honestly. But you'll see. That right there. Yeah. And it always rotates one way or the other. Either left or right, clockwise or counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. This one will do it counterclockwise. So what the tensioner is gonna do is go that way, counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And it takes tension, it's pulling the belt this way, this direction. And when you, I'm just gonna put some tension off to make sure we can get tension off it first. Yeah. And then we can just pull the belt right off. Either gonna be a socket or it'll be recessed, like a three eighths inch, you know, mm -hmm. recess one half inch, right? So it's sprung, so watch counterclockwise and this one loosens it. Oh, see weird. that? See that? Yeah. That takes all the tension off the belt. Oh, so the belt okay. okay, I see, yeah. You see it? I thought those grooves were part of the tensioner, but those grooves are the belt. And you can look at it. There's sometimes there's a sticker for your belt routing, but you mm. I don't know. Dude. Oh, it'll like show you? Yeah, so on some cars there is, but it'll like, it might fall off. It might have fallen off on this one. It looks like that, the way they do it. Like yeah, yeah. It'll show you the belt routing one. Huh. But here's the belt routing one. Uh, okay. For what? yours. <clears throat> okay. Holy That's crap. the power steering pump. That's your alternator. That's your compressor. Those are either pulleys. Okay. Those are those three are either pulleys. That's your crankshaft. That's your tensioner sitting right there. So you wraps oh. around. The tensioner moves to the left to get tension off. And when you put the new one, 
you pull that uh, way and it pulls back against it. That so way the crankshaft the crank drives everything, right? Right. Exactly. Because the crankshaft is being moved to by your com internal combustion to drive the wheels. See? So if you know that, then you know how to serpentine <clears throat> this yeah. thing through there? Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Weird. But uh, if, if you weren't replacing your belt, all right, so you would still have to loosen it. But you would just loosen enough to pull it off the alternator? And that's it. And then replace it and get it back on there. Now, it's not that easy to get it back on on a lot of cars, but, um, yeah. you know. I didn't press record on that. I did. Oh, no. You want You want to? Does it bother you? What? No. Okay. Oh, and it falls pretty far. Hmm? It falls pretty far once you take the belt off. Like, it moved, it moved back about an inch from where it used to be, right? Yeah, I mean, you should... So it's pretty tight. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Usually, um, you grade a, a belt's tightness, whether it's okay enough, by the amount of deflection it has relative to uh, the distance between pulleys. Uh -huh. If it's, it's short, you know, it shouldn't move at all. If it's like a foot, it's supposed to deflect an inch at most. Use that kind of rule of thumb. Think of that. Yep. Hmm. So even if you have the schematic, you kind of think about, okay, this ran around the top. This comes off here. Just kind of think about what you're, where you're going with it and where it was before. It's not much room to work. Yeah, if I couldn't do it, I would just take off this fan shroud and All then right. ultimately drain the, a little bit of coolant and take the this clothes off too. If I couldn't realistically get to it yeah. without like, bumping and stuff and pushing too hard on things. You know? Yeah. So then you. So you don't have to take the fan off to. Then you snake it around the, the belt? You don't have to. Ah. If it makes it much easier, you know, you can take the shroud off. The shroud is this, you mm. know? Hmm. The shroud might, you know, and then if you want to go as far as if you need to take the fan in. How do you, you know, get the belt? Oh, you wrap it around the, uh, you wrap it around the oh, fan Oh, around blades. the fan? Yeah. Huh. I was wondering how you, like, okay. Yeah, you just wrap it around the fan and turn it. Oh, so it's clear of the fan, it just drops down. Ah. When we get back out, you'll see that. Does that belt look pretty warm? Yeah. You can, you can see the belts from the top of it. See those cracks? It shouldn't crack like that. Oh, hmm. it's pretty worn. Once you see that and it starts fraying around the edges, mm -hmm. belts cheap. Oh yeah, it. it's cracking. Yeah, all the way along, all the way. Certain spots, force flex harder than others. Do we need to let that one relax or anything? Like open it up and let it relax out, or oh, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't think. I mean, I don't think so, but it might. That's that's what you want. If this wasn't stretched, so you can along with that. I wouldn't want the belt. Does it look good, dude? Those yeah. are pretty highly rated belts. Yeah. You could buy one that was like four more dollars, but it wasn't any better, was a thing. Mm. It was made like, might be made in the same exact factory. Okay, so that's how you would do a belt. You shouldn't have taken that long mm. with the tensioner. But when it comes to the alternator here, so this alternator is gonna have two bolts. So I'm gonna show this door real quick. Okay. That one right there, mm -hmm. and that upper one right there. It holds it to the motor. See that? That one and that one. Down there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, back in there. Oh, crap. Yeah. Back there. That no, one. That, okay. That yeah. one. Can you see that one? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. The upper one and that one. <clears throat> and then, of course, all of them have the electric hookup for the to the voltage regulator, for that gray cap. Mm -hmm. okay. And this one, you just look at what's connected to it. And so I just have, okay, it's connecting a bracket to hold this with the 10 millimeter nut, obviously. And then there may be another one somewhere down there. You want to get rid of those first. Um.
Hey, I had to wait for you before I did anything. I want to show you. Yeah. So anyway, I staked it out at the top, okay? Well, oh, look. look at that. I'm um, taking out. This idler pulley, this upper one, listen. Yeah. The rest of them, you know, if you go to the upper one, the, well, that's part of the tension. The lower one and the one on the left, the other two, don't uh -huh. make that noise. Is that okay that makes that noise? Uh, it, it, that'll be really loud. Here, watch, this is your other idler pulley. Okay. What? I'm spinning it. You'll yeah. hear it. That's going to be really loud. I think it's going to be really loud. I want to place the idler. Oh, we need to go to the store. Ask them for another one. That's good. Another alternator with a quiet pulley. Or if they have that, they, if they have that pulley, we can just replace it on there. We could loosen that one and put that one on. You want on? It's quiet. And buy another idler pulley. The three idler mm -hmm. pulleys are all the same. So that I would replace it because if I put it back together, you might hear that thing. Yeah. How loud would it be? Like it is now? Did you hear it was like, ah? That's not the idler pulley, is it? That, like, whining, mm -hmm. that type of noise. I think it was probably had to be coming from the alternator, but it's not from because as pulley. you speed up, it's not from the pulley. As you speed up, it goes. It gets louder as you as you uh, accelerate, as you put gas. Yeah, the faster it spins, the faster it gets louder again. I think it was coming from the alternator, but it wasn't coming from the pulley on the alternator. The alternator well, they didn't say it was from the pulley. They said it was from the bearing, bearing inside. Bearing the inside. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that means. Yeah, there's a bearing that spins. Okay. Okay, okay, the bearing in, uh, the, the bearing in the alternator and the, um, behind the copper wiring. They're talking about the end alternator itself. I thought you were talking about the bearing of the pulley. I don't know. If I tighten it all the way down like it should be, it's too loud. I think we, need, we should go buy another pulley. I think it's like 15, 20 bucks. Do you mind, uh, running to get one? No, I'll go get one. I'll just stay here. Where, um, do you, do you know where the closest part place is? Yeah, on, uh, there's an auto zone on Peace Tree Industrial. I don't know, I take a left on back and if you take a right back on Shiny Tucker, I was like, why don't I just let it out and take a right on Shiny Tucker? Run all the way down and all of them do. Let's see. Um, it's less than three miles, it says. You don't need the receipt, probably, right? To swap it out. Return the core at the same time. Will they give you? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. Huh? Like yep. Yeah. We'll take the core. Let me grab my jacket. Go ahead. I'll just go ahead and turn the core back in, and uh, they should put it back on your card that you paid with. They'll uh -huh. put it back on whatever card you paid with. Okay. You know. in this box. Okay. And hopefully they'll be able to receive that. And then we need to find out. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. I got, uh, I got it right here. It's got coal up. Maybe it's just the wheel, just the wheel part. 
Yeah, let me take it off. You sure? Let me take it off. So anything that makes sounds that little, that quiet is excavated. Yeah, really yeah. It starts spinning really loud. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's going to be spinning. It's going to be spinning a lot. <laughs> Something that small, it's gonna be, that, I guess, relative to the paint shaft is uh, two, three times higher RPM. But I'm not sure how many times it is. It was torqued on there. I broke the torque hmm. off of it earlier. And then when I tighten it slightly back and it's still that loud, it hit ladders. You get it to where it's supposed to be tightened at. You know? Because the bearing's still good on it. It might go another 100k, you know? So. Well, okay. Thanks, man, for noticing that. So we're going to. I'm going to put another glove on. It's not that bad, right? Hmm? It's not that bad. I wouldn't know what I, I wouldn't know what to do. You, you still don't think you could do it? See, I had to go back in and replace no, all, all this. No, because all the uh, I wouldn't have known that pulley was a problem to begin with. <clears throat> and I, I I wouldn't know um, which sequence of taking apart things. Like I wouldn't probably oh. try, I wouldn't have taken this thing off because I wouldn't have known it would be in the way later. You would have figured it out. Sitting there holding the you would have figured it out. Trying to take yeah. Part. yeah. <laughs> you have to remount the alternator and then go back and figure out. Yeah. <laughs> you would figure it out though. I'm, I'm pretty sure you would. You would figure it out pretty easily, actually. They just take a little bit of time. Probably take three days. No. Yeah. I, I think you get it done faster than that. Um, I read the manual says uh, about 40 foot pounds for this, mm -hmm. which is quite a bit. Uh, no, it's not that bad. I mean, because these are 14 millimeter bolts, so 40 foot pounds isn't so bad. Can you feel that? You know what the 40 feels like? Yeah, it's like uh, two grunts. Kind of. <laughs> two grunts and a shimmy. <laughs> guys working on 100,000 long core vets, they don't. They don't, use a, torque. they don't use a torque wrench for <laughs> most things. Now things like uh, putting the head on, head bolt torque, yeah, they would torque that obviously, but other things, they, they, they don't just don't. Everything, you get everything close to it and it's good enough. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, didn't, I don't actually have a torque wrench that might fit in there is the thing. In that tight of a space, uh, I don't think yeah. I can get it on. Yeah. <clears throat> um. I don't know, maybe. See, when I loosened that, I'll try, I loosened this one. I felt how tight it was. I mean, from the factory, it was it was probably around 40 foot pounds. Not exactly, but it was up there. Because I had to use this half inch breaker bar to get it off. If you yeah. try to use the 3 inch ratchet, that's like that, sh you know, regular yeah. length. You There's no way you'll get leverage on it to break it. You'll end up slipping and ramming your hand into this and cutting your hand down to the flesh. That's another thing. You start working on stuff and your hand slips off. Yeah. It's gonna hit one of these things and cut you open. Yeah. So you yeah. have to be really careful or wear gloves. But the thing is, you need to wear gloves. They would just tear your hand open instead of cutting it open. I mean, I don't know. If, you know, like a Toyota mechanic works on a lot of these. Does these pulleys? I don't know if they would always drain the coolant and then take this hose off. I don't know if they would always do that. I mean, it might. They might. For all I know, I just I don't know. Yeah. 
You can't take the AC thing off. You can, but once you get to the system, you gotta the whole thing. Yeah, you got, they got to put it on a machine and suck it all out, mm. and then suck it right back in, and then put it back in. That would you would be on a machine for two hours. You're supposed to draw it back in for an hour, forty five minutes minimum, really? and then you put it back in. Mm. Yeah. So you do wait, like say for example, uh, you could do torque by. If you're kind of somewhat close to it, if you're not really far. How much weight you would be uh, picking up mm -hmm. on the end of the stick? Oh. But it's hard to do when you're pushing because you don't know how much. Weight yeah. you push. But yeah. if you're ever pulling, it'll be in my weight. You would be holding up. Feel like lifting a forty pound on yeah. that end of that stick. On the end of the stick right here. Because the longer this. Yeah, it's forty foot pounds on the. Oh, forty foot pounds like a foot from the point, right, or something like that. Or no. Oh, 40 pounds of uh, torque. If you had a three foot long pole, where's the 40 pounds measured from? The, like a foot out? That's a good question. If it was that long, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 that's a good question. Hmm. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you yeah, <laughs> I'm not to worry about it. Yeah, I just hit that with a half inch breaker bar. And I took it probably to about 25, 30. I, I wouldn't torque it down much more than that. Yeah, I wouldn't torque it. I would not. That's, the only way it's going to come off is you cut it off. I like blow it up. It's on like, by the right thing. Is that it right there? Yep, yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. that's, yeah. that's so much quieter, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so back on the alternator and the belt. There is a serpentine belt auto tension tool kit you buy, but um, you know it's it's kind of like the same thing as this. Uh, honestly, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is here is uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna thread this upper one in first. Yeah. And that way it holds it, and then we can pivot around to get the lower one in. Okay. Can we hold anything? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh okay. how'd you end up getting it out? Oh. Take it through the bottom? Through the top. Through the top. Yeah. Actually, yeah, actually it came out here quite easily. So you can see, see this? Okay. Yeah. That bolt actually goes through here and then threads into that thing right there. That's the top one. Now you see that you see that piece of metal right there? It fits into this thing like a puzzle piece. Oh yeah. Okay. You see that? Yeah. It fits into this like a puzzle piece. Yeah. Was That's it hard the bottom. To off? That's the part. Was yeah, it shimming off was a little bit tough. So yeah. It goes like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See the thing was when I was looking at taking from the alternator, I mean it was it looked like it maybe maybe even harder from the alternator. I mean from the to pull as far as pulling on stuff. Yeah. Well, it may have even been harder to go from from there than from here. I'm gonna set this right here.
so much. Mm-hmm. So key here is okay. And you gotta get these threads in by hand. That goes in easily. Mm-hmm. If it goes in hard and you can't do it by hand, don't thread it in. Yeah. You don't, you don't mess it up every time. So you hold it up, get the weight off it just enough, mm-hmm. and you can thread it in by hand, and you know that it's threaded in enough, like you thread it in correctly, mm-hmm. and then you can kind of stop carrying it so much. You see how easy it is for me to turn that? Yeah, yeah. If it was like wedging, then you need. And you make sure that bottom part will go, and it will, so. So you know the threads are on now, you can just hit it with a. I mean, some mechanics, like once you get it on, they go with an air hose and just zoom, 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 and everything's done. It's way, one way they say time. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, so you don't lock right. it in place before you tighten it down? Or are you, are you just getting it on there a little bit further? Yeah, just getting it on a little more. It's, uh, it's uh, like, it, it'll just rock really? on now. It's already, if you see. Look, when you undid, watch. when you undid, see, it goes right oh, yeah, there. Yeah, when you when you undid the um, the old one, did it drop out or did it kind of? It was stuck. It was stuck. Okay. Yeah, it was stuck. I had to shimmy it out. Left and right. So when you put it in there, it looked like you put the the bearing facing in and then dropped it in and, and turned it, it right. The pulley faced in. Yeah, yeah. And when I got it here, they wouldn't have gone straight. I I turned the unit. To clear the uh, pieces that are too wide. And if it would have gone in, I would have forced it in or out. I would have gone through the fender. That somebody said you can get it through the fender easier. Right? Yeah. It doesn't look like that to me. It looks like I have to push even more of this wire out of the way. Yeah. I like this. You see the hole right here? And if the oil filter, yeah. the hole, yeah. you just yeah. put a cup under there and it catches all the uh, residual amount. See yeah. This? That's what yeah. I do. I have to hold a hole in there. Oh, you, you, you change your own oil? Yeah. I let them change to the dealership this last time because I uh, wanted them to diagnose this problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's right here. And that's all, I, that's all I ch- they charged me for was the oil and oil filter. But. Oh, that's all they charge you for? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Surprised they didn't charge you $75 for diagnostics. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, uh... Did they give you new bolts, or are you putting in the existing bolts? No, nah, new bolts did not come with it. Okay. And uh, the other pulley didn't come with new one either, but it's okay. I mean, the washer and the bolt yeah. and all that were good. Is that the dealer where you bought this truck from? Top one semi tight, probably five foot pounds. I get the bottom five foot pounds. Then do the final torque down. No, I guess it's Stone Mountain Toyota. Because it was a better deal? Yeah, it was a, uh online deal. And then I went there and picked it up. Yeah, this this model. This truck? The no. pre-order is expensive. It's, it's all crazy. Yeah, now it is. It right? might be like 45 Yeah, it was 25 when I got this one. Yeah, I think this model probably is closer to 40 The only thing I wish I would have gotten was four-wheel. This doesn't have four-wheel. Really? Yeah. You wish you would have got the one? Yeah, because the farm driving around. It. You know? But you just don't get stuck. <laughs> and it's not a problem. Yeah, when it's raining, though, you don't. Yeah. It's really bad. You can't really go out there when it's raining, can you? No, no. There's, so, yeah, that, there's real clay, you know? So it just, it's just slip. There's no, there's no traction whatsoever. It, you, as soon as you get on it, it fills your tires, and then they're just like, it's like a slick track. You would need those peg, true mud type dogging tires that eat into the mud. Yeah. And then you probably wouldn't, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to get out of there, huh? And the, you know, the rear end's so light on trucks that yeah. it just, the differential's good though for like snow. When I, when we had those snow days, you know, I just locked the differential and it works pretty well. Yeah, so both For wheels street. drive good. But yeah. both, both wheels drive together. Yeah. It has a locking diff option, huh? Yeah. Because you got the towing package, so it would have that on there. Yeah. I mean, that's a uh, significant 
It's like upgrade. halfway between four wheel, you know. It's a significant mechanical upgrade, having a locking diff like that. Oh really? On your driving wheels? Oh yeah. Ninety percent of cars on the road for all wheel drive don't have locking I mean, diff. Open diff, some kind of open diff. Let's say you're I can only I can only turn it like one thirty second of a turn at a time. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, because you, your space you got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do the final torque down on this with this wrench. Unless you'd rather me really, really go at it. I don't. Whatever you I think it would be a waste for me to. Whatever you think's doing. Yep. And that's just. You're just trying to get as tight as you can get, right? No, I'm not. No, no, no. If I got as tight as I could, I'll probably strip it still. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh uh. -oh. You wanna put weight on it? Go no, on. I'm good. Yeah, I wouldn't tighten it any more than that. I mean, you could. You could probably go another 10, 20 foot pounds without stripping it, but you can start stretching the threads. You know? Yeah. And then on a small, as you get small, it's 14 to 12, and then especially a 10 or 8, you can literally, you can strip right through with you so easy with your hand. You don't want to do that. So. See? So. Yeah. So you can see, come over here and see how it's lined up. So the grooves obviously go in all the pulleys, the grooves, and then the idler pulleys, the back side of the belt, smooth side, well, we'll rub against that, obviously. Right? Yeah. Never sound that. See how they line up perfectly? So the grooves, to the uh, so smooth. Anything, anything that's got. That's smooth is going to be the back side. Back side, exactly. Exactly. It always is. Uh -huh. So you got everything except for the belt? Yeah, the belt goes, well, I could, I could go, I'll go ahead and punch the alternator back on. Like all the little pieces. Oh, you yeah. know, the connections and stuff? Yeah. I mean, it really wouldn't matter if, like, if you could put the belt on first and then this, but yeah, you could. So that little thing screws into the side of the alternator. Well, I take that off right there, and then uh, this it pops in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll pop in there and click on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a bracket that attaches the side of this alternator right here. What? Okay, one right there. Yeah. And then another one. Well, I get a light on. I'll show you. It, it Down attaches. there. Oh, it had two connections. To it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. There's another one right here. That one, and then this one, right there. See that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's a uh, 1100 lumen rechargeable lithium light. Fifty six dollars at Walmart. Really? Sure. Yeah. For rechargeable? Yeah. You buy it in the store. It's fifty six dollars. Huh. You plug out your phone, little USB cord, and charges it. Has um, it been good? How long have you had it? About two years. Oh really? I like oh. probably ran over it with my car a few times. It looks pretty. It's durable. been a beat, pretty beat up. It's lasted, and no batteries. I would spend more than that in a year on batteries. So the easily. battery is like... It's, it's not, a lithium it's not, pack. Okay. It's not yeah, removable. Yeah. So like if you wanted to put a new lithium battery in it, after, well after like five one. years, yeah, I think you have to get a new one. I don't think it's accessible. Yeah. But online, the worst thing is, if you want to buy it like on eBay or Amazon, it's $140. Oh, you right. might more than that now. So I don't know why Walmart sells it so cheap in the store. I right, so there's no room here. You want to do all this but pretty much by hand, more or less. You know? Yeah. Or if you have a self-ratcheting, small ratchet. One of these, you could use that, mm. or just use this to tighten it. Can you see this one right here? Can you get to it? Can you see that? I can, yeah. That bottom bracket? Yeah. Can you put it there? If I move my hands out of the way? I can see that little notch that comes out on the alternator. No, no, below it right here. That thing right there. It's a bracket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The bracket is supported by through the side, side of the alternator. So that means, well, I guess maybe every alternator is designed a little differently, but based on the car. Or does every alternator have a little bracket attachment like that? Oh no, based on the car. Okay. Yeah. Are you just feeling, or can you even see what you're doing? Oh, uh, I can barely see it. Okay, not at all. So I'm using my heading fingers like that. <laughs> If you ever run into this problem, that's what you have to do. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have no other way you can get to it. So these little bracket things tend to, you, you just get a belly snug and it's good enough. You mm -hmm. don't want to tighten it with that. Just holding the wires on. Yeah, hold, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, those two brackets holding those on, on. So you see this right here? The green thing? Yeah. And this is a plug. You, you have to hear it. Feel it or hear it or both. Okay, I, I heard, heard a little. Yeah, I heard it and felt it. So you gotta make sure that's on. 
So it does things like that oh. and shake off. Oh. And then this right here goes on. You see this? You see how this is a... Uh, Why is there a nut already? Oh, they gave you a new nut. And... Okay, you can put it right here. So you see how uh, it has two, div two divots to go into so it doesn't turn? You see yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Make sure that goes in that like that, you know? So huh. it makes all the contact it needs to make. They don't want that to rotate. Huh? They don't want that to rotate, do they? Nope. And then this one again, you know, uh, not too tight, but. Cool. And uh, <clears throat> this is part I took off. I can always put it back in the end. This, uh, I'll show you what this, this, this thing was the strangest thing, you know. And that was connected here to the side. It went to the side right there? Oh yeah, this one to the side right there. That thing attached to. I mean, it would be okay if you put this in later, but just put it in now. Is that gonna get in the way of the belt? Or are you good? No, uh, I think it'll be good. <clears throat> you see how that has this to keep it from turning? Uh -huh. See that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't like breaking stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, like, okay, so this one I was trying to do that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with hold on to this. Oh, okay. okay. See that? It'll what? You hear that? Right. Yeah. I think it goes the other way. I thought for sure it was this way. That's where I remembered it. But I must be remembering it backwards. Let's go the other way. Yeah. Right? Think about how it fits together before you tie thread something in, you know? I thought you need to get this trunk to it. No. The only thing I have to do is park it differently. <laughs> so Kellen can pull in. Yeah, that's making it, you think it'll make it a lot easier. Of course, I was the one I can figure out you, you, you pull it instead of push. But, nevertheless. Yeah. It didn't seem to be that common sensible to me. It really, I mean, I thought I was just dumb. It didn't seem like that common sensible to me, but. So everything's okay. The brackets on, you should check all of this before you think. Brackets on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and cut this slack off right here. Just, just to get something out of the way, you know? You know? Well, it might not even be cut, it's fine. Let me see. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it'll wound itself a little bit, but. It's not covering anything. You have a lube actually covering it there. See what I mean? It's yeah. just mm -hmm. it's lube all the way to there. Yeah. If it uh all the way to here, you know, if it starts to keep coming off, then you don't want to take. Oh, I, I mean, I, that's not something you need to worry about. You know? Yeah. Like, this stuff wasn't gonna stick anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> so that connector down here is good. That ground. See, there's another ground right there. See that? There's yeah. multiple grounds. That's another ground to your chassis. See that? Uh huh. That one's still good. Just make sure it's all good. You didn't loosen anything, anything came off or anything like that. That one's good on there. Brackets. Both connections. Those are good. That looks good. Now for the belt. Stick it over this fan. So it is a little harder than normal because uh, because it's so it's so tight, you know, right yeah. here. Yeah. It makes it more difficult. Than, than, than really. Does your car have more space than this car, like engine wise? Oh yeah. But this is a V6, you know. So uh, kind of because it's a V6, really drive. Right. The engine has to be mounted forward for wheel drive. So, okay, now that you got it around the fan, see how it's in there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, this routing here, it seems sensible for me to run it around the crankshaft. Or you don't necessarily always run it around the crankshaft, though. And then go to the right and run back down to the left.
anything in place? Oh, uh, no, no, no. No? That's good. I left that power steering off to give him a little slack here. Ah. Uh. And then, uh... I mean, I got it. You got it, yeah. Yeah, I just gotta get it. This one crucial area here, I would make sure I get it in, right? And, uh... It's just, it's just one spot. It's just one spot. I mean, the rest really? of the belt went right on like I uh, went around in just one spot. I'll get it. Just give me a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah it's pretty tight. It's one spot. Uh, this, this is just the, this is probably the hardest part of it, the whole whole day right here. This one spot. Getting it in. Yeah. Just you know, I got all the belt except this one spot between the crankshaft and the. Uh, well, of course, it's just, it just takes time to do this. Yeah. Um, there's a trick, but I've never done this belt, so i got to figure out what the trick is. Pull it together and put it in. Maybe, maybe I could do that. Fold it. That goes like so. And one way this can work is fold one of these to go in. That's hard, huh? Yeah, that's a heck of a fold. Oh, man. Do you need anything? Uh, not right now. I'm okay right now. I probably gotta take a break. I'm gonna go and I'm yeah. stop for a while. Yeah, you wanna take a break? I'll probably gonna pop it on once I stop for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I got around everything in like one minute, right? And then I got to this crankshaft part, and I've been on that. I was on that for like 20, 30 minutes, and I decided to just stop for a minute. So remember, if I don't wrap around this power steering, I give myself the slack. If I give myself the slack, I can sandwich it, maybe.